So I wanted to talk today about the link between conservation and restoration. Now and then when I'm talking to people about tree planting and restoration, they say to me, well, isn't it more important to just be conserving what we have? And so I wanted to address the fact that conservation is hugely important, especially with the old growth forests that we have around the world, but really conservation in general is hugely important. And restoration does not in any way take away from the importance of conservation. In fact, it really helps with conservation. And so I wanted to explain why, because it isn't necessarily obvious and how at this point in human history, we really need both because we have so much degraded land on the planet. We have about 5 billion acres of degraded land on the planet that has been damaged over time from human impact. And that's a massive opportunity for us for restoration. So one really fantastic example of when restoration actually really helps with conservation is the example of Mount Kenya in Kenya, Africa. So Mount Kenya is a forested watershed mountain that feeds major rivers. So these rivers have lakes downstream and lots of farmland downstream and are hugely important for that country's overall health, the health of their people, the health of their environment. So the importance of keeping that watershed intact cannot be overstated. And because in Kenya, 48% of the population is living underneath the poverty line, you have a lot of people who are scrambling to get their needs met. And a lot of those people are farmers. And so people who are farming are encroaching more and more and more into that forested watershed in order to cut down trees and put in farms. And then the farms eventually degrade that land and break the water cycle. And it creates a cascade of a downward cycle where the long-term sustainability of the people isn't there. There's a loss of the wildlife. There's a loss of the water and the watershed itself becomes less and less viable. So this problem cannot really be resolved until the needs of the people can get met right where they are, which is on their own farm. There's an organization called We Forest and the project that they created was to do a 70-30% split where they invested 70% of the project's funding into helping the people who live around this watershed create agroforestry on their current farms. So rather than just having monoculture farms or farms that only have a few crops, with agroforestry, with forest gardens, you integrate trees onto the farms, beneficial trees, that do all kinds of things from providing fuel wood to providing animal fodder to helping to increase the healthy soil to decreasing erosion to stabilizing the water table and the water cycle. There's all kinds of things trees can do on farms that are beneficial. And so by empowering these people and these farmers to include these trees in their farms, they now get their needs met from their own farms. So they're not going to the forest to cut down wood for their fuel, to look for medicines and foods and for building materials because they have all of that growing on their own farm. And We Forest took the other 30% of the project funding and used that to pay the people to plant native seedlings up in that forested area in areas that had been damaged and that they were trying to restore. So they would pay them to grow the seedlings on their farms and then take them up the mountain and plant them in areas that needed more restoration. And so with this 70-30 split, they found that they could really meet the needs of the people that were encroaching on this area. So it's so important to put people at the center of this conversation and not think that we always need to separate people from land when we talk about conservation. There are so many people worldwide who are in this situation where they're stuck in poverty and so they do things in order to meet their needs that may degrade an environment and eventually degrade their own ability to live because they don't have a choice. By putting the power into their hands to transform the farmland that they're using away from more monoculture farms and into these really diverse farms that use trees in ways that fulfill their needs beyond just food. It really shows how 
the power of restoration can become something cultural where when people become restorers and they understand how the ecosystems around them and that they've created on their own land really work and then they work to protect them. So long term it creates a win-win-win for everything, for the mountain, for the wildlife, for the water, for the soil, and most especially for the people. This is the key, this is the answer. And so the same is true for farmers across the rest of Sub-Saharan Africa, where you have 250 million farmers facing desertification. A lot of the time we think of desertification as just coming from the Sahara down with the wind, and that is part of the story. But a big part of the story of desertification in Africa is actually that the farms themselves have been turning to dust because of non-sustainable farming practices like monocultures. And so what reverses this trend and takes a downward spiral into an upward spiral is again the agroforestry, the combination of beneficial trees on farms that create a whole cascade of benefits for the people and then create a diverse ecosystem that is rich with foods and medicines and building materials and a living fence. The canopy of the trees protects the crops. We often think of crops as needing sun full time, but sometimes it can be too much and it actually overwhelms the crops and makes them more water hungry. So one of the best things to do in areas that have too much heat and not enough water is to create a nice light canopy. Another benefit is simply animal fodder, which is really important. In terms of conservation, these people are sending their animals out on land that barely has anything growing left on it because these broader landscapes are really in a state of collapse. And so having the animals go out onto that land is just putting more pressure on that land and taking away whatever trees or shrubs or grasses are starting to grow and just accelerating this process of desertification. And so it's radiating out from all of these small farms. And so the forest garden approach reverses that trend. And one of our planting partners with the Trillion Trees campaign, Trees for the Future, are who provide the education and seed to enable farmers to join a four-year master forest gardener training program that transforms their land from dust to these diverse, healthy ecosystems that are farms that are rich with a variety of nutritious food and so many other things that these farmers need. But the first thing that they do is they plant a living fence. So 2,000 trees that go around the edge of around two to two and a half acres of land. And that cuts down the wind, it keeps the animals out that they don't want to have in on their farm, it keeps their animals in, and it provides fodder for their animals. So it's the cut and carry way of taking care of their livestock rather than having their livestock roam all around looking for food and just continuing to compact the land and to eat everything in sight. And that allows the land to start to come back on its own. These people go from being very deep in poverty to starting to grow their way out of poverty where they can send their kids back to school and the wildlife returns and eventually the water cycle stabilizes and returns and they become restorers. And as restorers, they're much more inclined to protect their surrounding environment because they aren't at the very edge of their needs where their needs are actually being met. So they're able to think long term and no longer be trying to meet their needs out of desperation in an environment that needs to rest. So by supporting them, we're helping to restore areas that are right now desert or turning into desert into fertile farms again. It's putting people at the center of the conversation around the need to take care of our world in a way that, that works for people and the land. So it's where restoration really becomes conservation. So what we propose with the Trillion Trees campaign is for everyone who can to pay a minimum of $8 a month to plant 30 trees a month with these farmers in Africa through Trees for the Future, our incredible planting partner. So you're really planting a tree a day. With the Trillion Trees Campaign's growth strategy, the power of you plus two, when you inspire two of your people to do the same and plant a tree a day, 
within 30 days and then they go and they inspire two of their people to sign up to plant trees within 30 days and on and on. That creates exponential growth. Within three years, we could have 300 million tree supporters on board, all helping to plant a tree a day. And so that means that within 10 years, we can be planting a trillion trees. And a trillion trees would be a total game changer for this planet. So along with the awesomeness of planting a trillion trees because of restoration, I hope you're understanding that all of that restoration with people who right now are actually harming existing ecosystems in order to get their needs met, it really helps with conservation long term as well. Because we're going to be taking pressure off a lot of existing environments that really need to have that pressure taken off of them. And we're taking pressure off of people. So poverty is not good for the environment. Getting people out of poverty is beneficial for the environment. And at this point in human history, we are simply beyond just needing conservation. We've got 5 billion acres of degraded land worldwide and more and more every year. And so we really need to be thinking about conservation and restoration. And that's the magic. That's the real magic of supporting people to restore their own environments is that that enables more conservation. So please visit trilliontreescampaign.org and sign up now to plant a tree a day with trees for the future. Plant them for your family members as well if you want and then share with your friends and start to get your community involved as well because that's how this can all grow. I hope that you enjoyed this video today and that it made you think a little differently about conservation or restoration and got you excited about participating in restoration. Please click the like button and if you want to have more content like this that is talking about the powerful benefits of tree planting and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm so very grateful for your time and attention and for your interest in tree planting. So thank you so much and we'll see you in the next video.